This time on Movie Mash, I will take this movie and rewrite it with this genre. JC, how you turn one of the most beloved musicals starring the incomparable Julie Andrews into a magical, mystical mayhem of a movie? First, let's break down a few things. IMDB says... A young novitiate is sent by a convent in 1930s Austria to become a governess to the seven children of a widowed naval officer. Excuse me, sir, I don't know your signal. You may call me Captain. This movie makes me feel so much joy especially. The cinematography is stunning. The blocking and staging of the actors is a masterclass in itself. What is this voice? And the song so good. good. What is a fantasy? Fantasy is a broad genre that can target audiences of all ages. Today I will be looking at fantasy movies targeted at the younger generation for inspiration. Some elements that set fantasy apart from other genres are magic. <laughs> Unique setting. Why? Because magic is not something in our world, even though I wish it was. <laughs> so desperately. Therefore, the writer must establish a world that can coexist with magic. Heroic adventure. Why? The genre expectation is usually the protagonist has to do something and have a hard time doing it. Would you watch it if it were easy? Probs not. Probs not. I want always to be a boy and have fun you say so but i think it is your biggest pretend relatable themes usually relevant and reflective of our non-magical world and you felt ordinary like nothing you do changes anything and now you have a chance to do something that changes everything it makes the story accessible and thus more enjoyable it's my fault really it's too hard on him. We all were. Power structures or hierarchies. Many years ago, a splinter faction emerged among our people. Magic usually means power, so there's normally some way to categorise it. Throughout the history of the fantasy genre, these imagined systems tend to elevate whiteness. Why? Because our society is one of systemic racism and colonialism. So if you're writing a fantasy involving some hierarchies, do some reflection, redrafting if needed, and make your story a stepping stone towards positive change. Now let's discuss a few familiar fantasy tropes. The chosen one and the unchosen one. I'm not a dwarf, I'm a girl. Human. The chosen one is usually the protagonist, for whatever reason, destined to do the big something in the climax of the movie. They don't even know about the prophecy. Well, then. And do you think we're the ones? The unchosen one is the protagonist who rises to the challenge of defeating the evil because they want to, not because some prophecy, scroll, or mighty sorcerer predicted it. Promise me one thing, Jake. That you will try to look after them all. I promise. Mentors. Right on time. Mentors often guide and train the protagonist in some knowledge or skill or magic or all the above. It's common for the mentor to die, die! <laughs> to give the protagonist the final push they need to complete the quest, retrieve the ancient relic, defeat the evil or all the above. Then you'll have to lead us. I can't. Aslan believed you could, so do I. Maria is a free-spirited witch studying to become a high witch at a coven dedicated to eradicating the evil overlord with no name. Instead of this song, I, go to the hills. I will need a spellbinding opening to demonstrate the rules of my magic. The 
opening of Peter Pan involves low stakes as Wendy tells her brothers a story, yet it sets up everything we need to know to understand the rules of Neverland. Captain Hook, sword fighting, magic, fairies, flying, and of course, Peter Pan himself. The night on which the extraordinary adventures of these children may be said to have begun was the night Nana barked at the window. So in my opening sequence, Maria performs two types of magic. Raw magic, cast through her hands. And harnessed magic, spells cast through an object, like a boring old wand or something. Turn this stupid fat rat yellow. The first method is more powerful and dangerous. <laughs> And it is clear Maria has a natural inclination and passion for it. The hills are alive with my raw magic. <laughs> However, her abilities cause some concern for the witches in her coven. Is she a danger to them all? I hope this new infraction ends whatever doubt you may still have about Maria's future here. Instead of this song, How do you solve a problem like Maria? High Witcher Bess has a premonition that the Von Trapp children are the ones to defeat the evil overlord with no name, and they will need the added power of an old relic of some kind to do it. High Witcher Bess knows magic is Maria's life, so entrusts Maria to mentor them. Seven children? Do you like children, Maria? Yes, but I'm seven. Ha ha! Look, Maria, my protagonist, is the mentor for this exercise. The children are the chosen ones. Bet you didn't see that one coming. So instead of this song, To be out in the world, to be free. I think it's about time we meet the villain. <gasps> Hook. Let's take a closer look. I'm yet to decide which character from The Sound of Music is the evil overlord with no name. Why not put your suggestions in the comments below? The evil overlord with no name has heard rumours of this mentor and wants to stop Maria before she can even reach the children. It would be interesting to craft something similar to The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe where the White Witch tricks Edmund into trusting her. Of course, you'd have to bring your family. Peter would be king too. No. But a king needs servants. I, I guess I could bring However, Maria is no fool and quickly catches on to the ploy. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna miss you. It is a chance for Maria to size up the enemy. And to put her abilities to the test against the evil overlord with no name. Pushed to her limits in this battle, Maria releases a significant surge of raw magic that injures the evil overlord with no name, forcing the evil overlord with no name to retreat. Perhaps the evil overlord with no name must seek the old relic of some kind if they are to defeat the chosen children who are to be mentored by such a masterful and dangerous witch like Maria. Like Maria. So off the evil lord with no name trots, leaving me to focus on Maria, undisturbed for the next part of the story. If I want, I can include a subplot about the evil overlord with no name trying to achieve their goal, just like Peter Pan includes Captain Hook's point of view as he plots to lure his enemy into a trap. I say, unhand that savage, you, you, you savage. Next is our introduction to the children and their unique powers. Miss Peregrine's home for peculiar children has some fun scenes showcasing the children's powers and how they use them in their daily life. I'd like to do the same in my version of The Sound of Music. At ease. Throughout this act, alongside scenes that demonstrate the children's ability with magic, I can also explore any character flaws or weaknesses the children may have that Maria needs to help them overcome, including the emotional distance they feel from the lack of attention from their father. In the morning, I shall be going to Vienna. Not again, father. Remember, she's the mentor. But why do it? Well, how else can we get father's attention? Oh, I see. I bet you're wondering how the captain fits into all this. His wife 
died when she lost control when practicing her raw magic. Because of this, he's restricted the children's education to harnessed magic. And he has stopped using magic altogether. Nothing that reminds him of her, even the children. He would prefer if his children didn't have to face the evil overlord with no name, but the prophecy has spoken. Maria knows this harness magic will not be enough to defeat the evil overlord with no name and challenges the captain's authority. But they're children! Yes, and I'm their father. He refuses to budge on teaching the children how to control, expand and unite their raw magic. Earth. Fire! Wind! Water! He believes raw magic is dangerous and so is she. Oh. Maria. That's who he's talking to. <laughs> Just so we're clear. <laughs> Still, the captain goes on a quest to retrieve the old relic of some kind before the evil overlord with no name gets there first. Unlike in The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, where the children are gifted their important items, the captain must risk his life against the evil overlord with no name to get it. How he does it with no magic comes down to pure circumstance, just like this showdown in Peter Pan. So, while he is gone, Maria teaches the children to control their raw magic because she'll have no wizard tell her what to do. All right, everybody, over here. Where are you going? To get in some practice. Cool. Training montage alert. Cool. Training montage alert. It's a cool training montage alert. It's a cool training montage When the captain returns with the old relic of some kind, he catches Maria and the children in chaos, practicing raw magic. Infuriated by his children's decision to delve into dangerous magic and Maria's impassioned appeal that he cast spells again and teach his children to defeat the evil overlord with no name, the captain attempts to fire Maria. I'm not children. finished yet, Oh, captain. yes, you are, Captain. However, he is drawn to a cacophony of magic and is astonished to see some of his children unite their raw magic in control. By your powers combined. Filled with emotion, the captain joins his children, casting a spell for the first time in years. <laughs> The captain apologizes to Maria and asks her to stay. If I could be of any help. You have already, more than you know. Maria has his support to teach the children to expand their raw magic. Kurt is the hardest to teach, yet most eager to learn. During a lesson, he struggles to unite his raw magic with Maria's. We'll have um, to practice. Do allow me, will you? Mm -hmm. The captain steps in and partners Maria in a spectacle of raw magic. Confused about her growing feelings for him, Maria lapses in judgment and accidentally hurts the captain with her raw magic. She is, as he said, dangerous. Feeling her failure as a mentor, Maria returns to the coven. However, High Witch Abbess learns that Maria left to avoid her feelings for the captain. I can't face him again. Him. So she encourages Maria to return to look for her purpose in life beyond magic. Good evening, Captain. Good evening. The Captain reveals his feelings for Maria and that he isn't frightened of her raw magic. Mm. So, instead of this song... So somewhere in my youth or childhood we have a scene where they unite their raw magic to cast a powerful spell to amplify the abilities of the old relic of some kind to help the chosen children defeat the evil overlord with no name. 
I can make it as spectacular as when the children from Miss Peregrine's home for peculiar children unite their powers to raise the ship from the ocean floor. The time has come for the chosen children to put what they have learned into action when the evil overlord with no name ambushes them. The evil overlord with no name is too powerful, even with the old relic of some kind keeping the children alive. And the chosen children are taken out of the fight two by two, until only little Gretel is left standing. The captain is shell-shocked at the sight of his injured children, so Maria must face the evil overlord with no name again. So instead of this song... We get an epic battle. Third meet, I do. How about this? <laughs> and the evil overlord with no name reveals the truth behind the death of the chosen children's mother. Have you guessed it? If not, it'll be revealed momentarily. They're gone! Maria narrowly escapes with her life. I'll take her alive! With help from her coven, Maria heals the children and they recoup in hiding. High Witch at best fears she got the prophecy wrong. Otherwise, the chosen children would have succeeded against the evil overlord with no name. This is when Maria figures out the twist. The children are not destined to fight. The captain is. Just like Wendy inspires Peter with her hidden kiss, Maria's final act as mentor is to inspire the captain to protect his children from the evil overlord with no name who murdered his wife. <gasps> the captain defeats the evil overlord with no name using pure, potent, dangerous, raw magic. <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing because it truly helps me out. And comment below what special powers you think the Von Trapp children would have. Until the next smash, bye! My neighbours are just coming and going. <laughs> it's been so hard to film. Why are they home? It's a Tuesday. Ah! Okay, I've got this. If you want to see more where I rewrite the full movie into a different genre, then check out this video.